Hi, my name is Charles Malky, biologist and plant expert with Ivory Organics, where we grow cool plants. And today we're going to be talking about now part two of four, which is soil preparation. I've already prepared the hole, which I've simply dug out to about the height of the container. I've excavated the soil, which is over here to my right, and I've got with me some compost, which I'm going to be using. This here was purchased from the local nursery. This here is made by Kellogg, which is a local um, manufacturer just based out of outside of Long Beach. And um, I specifically picked up something called grow mulch. It says two in one planting and mulch. Um, and another product that they make, which works, I would say just as good for um, amending your soil would be um, a product called amend, um, which I believe has some more green print on the bag. Um, in preparing your soil, we just returned from the California Rare Fruit Growers meeting that they had this last Saturday morning in Culver City, and that's with the West Los Angeles chapter, um, which I'm a member of. And they're talking about when it comes to your soil preparation, and take a look at this soil, which I just, um, maybe if I go deep enough, you can actually capture some of this life that's in here as well. And sure enough, here it is. Um, you can take a look at the soil and take a look at all of the organic matter. This here, firstly, is an earthworm that I found here in the soil. Um, but take a look, there's some twigs in here, looks like another type of root, there's some bark, some chips, some leaf mulch, there's like quite a bit of organic material that was in this soil from other plants that I've had growing at this site. Um, adding too much compost is not a good thing. When they typically talk about preparing your soil initially, they typically recommend you've got 50% compost or 50% whatever soil you're going to improve your soil with, with 50% native soil. And you're going to want to mix those two up, but keep in mind that all the compost you're adding is going to turn into dust. This entire bag, probably within a year or two, let's, you know, imagine it's, it's, it's an area of about this much um, fuel or, or, or organic, um, you know, carbon is going to be consumed by what's also known as the underground jungle being the earthworms and the nematodes and the, the grubs and the bacteria. And the bacteria are actually a very important part of the life in here. The bacteria are contributing a lot of waste. They're going to be consuming and breaking down that organic matter and releasing a lot of waste that in turn will feed your plant. But there's a lot of life that's happening underground and it's underground which is most important for the health and the success of your tree. So when you're adding a 50% native to 50% compost mix, Keep in mind that the plant may settle some, and with that, make sure that when you plant your plant, you keep it at least uh, you know, about an inch above the soil level to account for some of that settling while the roots get established and settled within its growing height and growing zone. Uh, in the lesson that was discussed this last weekend, they said on average, your soil should be nice and loose and airy, consisting of about 25% water, 25% air, the other almost 50% is just minerals, which is your soil, whether it be sand or silt or clay, but that's your base. And then within it is only about 5% organic material. Now organic material should be natural and basically recycling itself within, you know, the canopy of the tree that's dropping its leaves to the ground and enriching the soil naturally, which is ultimately the goal of this garden is to create something called permaculture, which is where you've got a permanent recycling of nutrients and health happening within the soil naturally. Um, what we're going to do here real quick is we've just excavated the soil here. We're now going to take the soil. Um, I've probably added quite a bit, but I'm also going to be taking this horrible soil as well. Take a look at all this clay. My soil is so good. I've had to go and find some of the worst parts of the garden to make sure that this tree doesn't settle also within the ground. So here we go. We're adding a lot of clay, you know, and some gravel, you know, to this as well to basically improve the texture and to make sure that the plant doesn't truly settle with all of this organic material that's already naturally in our soil, having improved it over the last three years now. What we're going to do is we're not going to mix the contents. And we're now ready to basically install the plant. We're going to want to test it before you put it in. 
and we're going to put that right here like so. And the goal is you're going to want to make sure that the soil level, that it's naturally in the container, is the same. And if you're going to air, you got to air um, to the side that it's about an inch above the ground rather than going too low under the ground so you don't end up suffocating those, tr those top air roots as well. So here we're going to go and take it out of the container. I'm being careful. I should have left a stake on it just to let you know from part one to help support the tree while I install it and then I should have replaced the stake at that point. But I'm just going to be careful to lean it in place while I install it and the next step will be to stake it. So here we go. We're just going to tap around the container like so. When it comes, and you can see actually with these avocado roots, they've already begun to basically get compressed near the base of the tree. And, the, and here you can see that the roots have begun to basically ring around the base of the container. What will ultimately happen if you don't help loosen these roots, so what we're going to do is we're going to try to open them up a little bit, but if you don't open these roots up, the risk is that they'll continue to spiral and create a ring as this tree continues to grow the roots at the bottom can end up constricting one another rather than growing out and creating a good foundation for this tree so you're going to want to pull all of these bottom roots out when it comes to the avocado more so than most other fruit trees you got to be gentle with their roots um, i know this looks a little rough but if we don't do this again it's going to also compromise the life and the age of this tree so here we go we've just opened those all up and now we're going to install it. And then we can backfill the soil. Once you, once you backfill the soil, you're going to want to basically create a ring with the soil around the plant. This will help serve as the water basin around the tree. And this here was our irrigation, which is going to be step for us to talk about watering and we're going to demonstrate that in just a minute um, or in our last segment and what we're going to do now is we're going to once you backfill all the soil make sure you go in with your fingers and you're going to want to press around the area where the container was to basically eliminate as many air pockets as you can we'll continue this process also throughout watering to make sure we further collapse any air around the soil what we can also do is we can also feed the soil as well. And over here are a few products that I want to share with you as well to continue feeding. I'm just so surprised about how much life is in here, but just right here on the surface, within a couple of inches of one another, I found three more earthworms. Look at all that life that's right there. But again, it's not so much the things you see as the things that you don't see that are underneath the ground. And that leads to my next point is feeding your plants. We just discussed again all of these whitewash products, the difference between our Ivory Organics whitewash as well as our three in one in the part one, as well as the ready to use spray. But over here, I've got a whole bunch of organic products. The first one here made by Espoma, um, another one here made by Kellogg's, and a third one here made by Eco Scraps. And these are all good, pro and I've also got some ready, you know, liquid feeds, and uh, another one that may look familiar, you see seen on the shelf, the fish fertilizer, and then, um, even miracle Grow has some organic products as well. This one here is specifically made out of bone meal. Uh, a more balanced fertilizer such as this here made by Eco Scraps is a 555. The goal is I want to make sure this plant has all the elements possible to feed the tree. Let's take a look at some of the ingredients that are in here that constitute an organic product. And if you take a look here, we can clean it up a little bit. It says that it's derived from feathers and blood and bone, and then sulfate of potash and some compost. So, and also with these numbers, it reads 555, being 5% nitrogen, 5% phosphorus, and 5% potassium. Um, what we're gonna do is we're going to just sprinkle without even reading the directions. The goal is this soil is already so far enriched. It's at the beginning stages of life. Um, we're now in October. Fortunately, here in California, we've got about another month or two of growing opportunity. So hopefully we get a little bit of growth out of this before it goes into winter where it'll go dormant, still be green as an evergreen, but there won't be much activity on the plant until come January, February of next year. So we're going to just sprinkle some product around the tree. I probably added about a quarter cup of product. We're going to just disturb the top quarter inch of soil to get that product down into the soil area. And just to let you know, most of the research 
supports the fact that most of the life of the tree is in the top 18 inches. So don't be too concerned about how deep you go as much as you should be concerned about caring for that upper surface area underneath the canopy of your trees. Right now, being that we've got a small canopy, there's only a small area that you've got to feed and be concerned about. But going forward, you're gonna to have to water a larger area, feed a larger area, and care for a larger area being as far as the plant's canopy reaches. So now we've just fed the soil, and the last thing we're gonna to do to help strengthen the trees, we're gonna support it. And adding a stake is a great idea, uh, especially in the first year, and possibly even going into the second year, until the wood within the plant gets strong enough to support its, its, you know, its height. And even as the plant grows, you may want to prune the plant down to control the shape and the size of the tree, and that will also further strengthen the plant and further strengthen the, the, the maximum load the avocado as well as any other fruit tree can support, the load-bearing weight of the tree. So we're going to basically take our stake here. We're going to go about a couple of inches away from the root ball. And we're just going to push that in. When tying the tree in place, simply take your twine and tie it against the stake. Do not tie a knot against the tree trunk as, again, that will constrict the flow of the water and the sugars in the plant. And then we can now wrap the tree like so. And you'll notice that I'm keeping I'm keeping a distance of about one to two inches so there's some sway. By allowing the plant to move some, that will also strengthen the, the supporting structures of the tree. So um, do allow it to move some as it gains its strength and that'll help make the plant even stronger going forward. I've also kept a couple of inches to allow for the tree to grow. All too many times, I leave enough room, but sure enough, within six months or eight months, the tree trunk is so large that it's constricting against the, the twine as well as the stake. So um, do periodically check on your trees. Do make sure that um, if you've got to restake it and resupport it, you do so. And then we can cut off the excess string um, once you get a chance. And now take a look at the leaves again one more time. If you're coming a little closer, you can see that the ivory organics that have sprayed on the leaves have since dried. And you can see it's created a nice light film to help keep the plant stay several degrees cooler in this, um, on this bright, sunny October morning. That basically brings us to the conclusion of part two. Let's re-review again the list. We did part one, why whitewash or paint your trees, branches, and leaves. Um, we just talked about soil preparation and the healthy organic soil equals maximum healthy and productive trees. Um, part three is gonna be irrigation, which will be mimic the rain systems are best. Part four is compost piles between trees and mulch will feed the underground jungle. And before I let you go, we just talked about all of these organic products, but I forgot to mention uh, even though miracle Grow has some organic products, a lot of consumers are still picking up chemical products. Even some of my neighbors would sometimes call me and say, well, what do you think about this product? Even other products on the shelf, not just miracle Grow, that are chemically based. Um, let's take a look at what a chemical ingredient based product will look like. You're going to see that it's derived from ammonium nitrogen, urea nitrogen, um, here it is, derived from potassium sulfate, Ammonium sulfate, urea, copper sulfate, iron EDTA, magnesium EDTA, and zinc sulfate. Completely different ingredients than these products that are derived from bone meal, blood meal, feather meal, and all these other things that are organic sources. When you do things chemically, you're still getting some elements from the periodic table that your trees need, but you're doing nothing, absolutely nothing, to feeding the underground jungle. You're not feeding the earthworms, you're not feeding the beneficial bacteria, you're not feeding all of the soil biology that in turn is creating a more balanced and more sustainable um, environment for creating the most healthy plants and trees within your garden. By doing things organically, you're also um, minimizing the risk of waste and runoff because as much as, some research will say, as much as 90% of your chemical fertilizers end up in the storm drains and runoff and ultimately into the, our streams, rivers, and oceans. Um, whereas if you're doing things organically, Again, the amount of, let's take a look at the percentages on this. We just talked about how 
Most of these organic fertilizers are low on percentages, as low as 555. But a chemical fertilizer can offer you so much more when it comes to percent of elements. I'm trying to find this here for you. Um, I found it here, but there's got to be a better way to present it right there. 18, 24, 16, 18% nitrogen, 24% phosphorus, 16% uh, potassium. So we've got double, triple, quadruple more elements available to your plant, but as we just discussed, it's doing very little to nothing and potentially even harming the soil biology. So if you're gonna do things organically in your organic garden, I gave you a lot of choices and options when it comes to organic growing. So I hope you found this part two informative and educational, and if so, be sure to like it. And most importantly, by subscribing below, you'll be connected to this and all of our other educational and gardening videos. Thanks again for watching, and happy gardening.